Hey guys, welcome to episode number eight. I'm running out of fingers. I'm not even going to try. Episode number eight about punking the junk pile art stuff. I know episode eight, and we're we're nowhere near light at the end of the tunnel. And you're saying, hey, or is this ever going to end? The answer is no. It's not over until I say it's over. Besides that, if I drag this out, every time I get like 13 hits, it's just one more millisecond. So my shed does not go into four closure. You don't want that, do you? Yeah. Pray for the unprayable for for. Anyway, whatever. I don't know what that was all about. But we are going to put a very expensive finish on Pumpkin. Now, Pumpkin didn't always look like this. Believe this or not, I have a model Harmony H. 1213 that Punkin looked like when Punkin was okay before somebody came along and messed Punkin up. And this is what Punkin looked like. Now, how do I know that? Because the last time I was in the dentist office, which would be the first time I stole this mirror, not really, beautiful, anyway, and I took this light. Have you anything to drink, sir? And shined it in here and it says H1213. Now, I am going to give you a break right now. And I'm going to show you a little clip of what Punkin looked like when I got Punkin. You won't have to listen to me talk. Yeah, here we go again. Small prayers are answered. Let's look at Punkin all dried out and stripped of its whatever this was before I did anything to it. Look, look, here it comes. Get ready. Look, mom, mom, look, look, look what I'm doing. Look, look. But this one here is going to be Punkin, P-U-N-K-I-N. I'm going to do a hashtag. That one's probably not taken. Punkin, the junk pile arch top. So what do we have here? We have a 1962. Remember I did an episode about how to tag your stuff and keep inventory to understand value. I'll try to give you a link up there. But we're going to walk through this guitar in a couple of episodes. It is a Harmony H1214 built... In 1962, I was two years old. I would have bought this guitar then and kept better condition had I had the ability to be economically self-sufficient back then. Part of the reason I'm calling this one Punkin, look at that. That looks kind of like a Punkin. It's, it, and the back is off all the way up here and it's pulling itself in at the waist. Okay, so how did Punkin go from bare wood to this? Well, if you watch the playlist right up there, right about now, you'll see that we took some uh, Kino, eucalyptus Kino stain that I concocted myself, and there should be an episode right up there right about now. And now I'm going to talk very slow. Do you know that if you are in a room full of people and you go like this, kind of on the sly, church a meeting everyone will start yawning there's that should give me enough time to tell you about the episode link about the dark color which is oak gall ink again hover your mouse up there and you'll learn how to do that and in one of the previous episodes about punk and i showed you how to make this finish now I will tell you this, when you're doing finishes, you want to find out if they're spirit-based, if they're water-based, they don't mix well. And then when you get something like this done, there's something that you can put over it to kind of seal it. Of course, before you start, 
um, the, which episode is that? Of course I remember. It's the Mississippi mudslide. It's in the playlist about using a Mississippi clay dirt for a finish. And there's a trick in there about potassium silicate that is a ground material that will help seal your wood and prep it for something else going on it. So, potassium silicate is good stuff. Kremer pigments is where you get that, by the way. Always use an MSDS sheet and protective equipment. But now that we got pumpkin where pumpkin needs to be, I've got some heavy duty, pricey instruments coming up in the future. And I'm going to practice on pumpkin to get good at a technique. Did I say get good? Get, get. That's almost like saying that I'm not good at it already. Well, the first time I do it, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Anyway, the technique is called French polish. They used it on uh, furniture going to the Edwardian days. What's my middle name? It's not Edwardian. Um, anyway, French polish is putting on a series of layer after layer after layer of a lac finish. Call that lacquer. Well, in the world I'm coming out of, there's our bugs and uh, and bug stuff because like bugs eat stuff. And then, well, you you guys are kind of the expert on that. Put the put the lid down, right? Anyway, I am going to tell you a little bit before we start. We're actually going to do this on pumpkin and. I'm going to start off by telling you a few things, but not enough for you to ever become competitive with me. Now, I like cobalt blue. Um, this has N. It's naphtha. No, I can't get it in California because looking at uh, across the street to cross it, there's a warning label for that in California. Everything has a warning label. This is naphtha. It's great at getting fingerprints, oils, and glues. When you start putting these kinds of finishes on things, by the way, um, French polish is also used by fine furniture makers, but naphtha is stuff that you can use to get your fingerprints. So when you're using uh, French polish stuff, put rubber gloves on. Don't put your fingers on it and, and, and make sure that you look around where the binding is or anything like that. Glue is a bad deal. We already talked a little bit about that in the uh, part about applying those DIY stains we did. So naphtha, you're going to need to know what that is. What else do we have over here? Oh, you know them Kleenex ghosts that you used to make out of toilet paper? when you were a little kid. Oh no, I'm the only one that did that. Yeah. Only me, right? Anyway, they have some things here that are called applicator pads. You're going to need to know what these are. They have a cotton ball or several. They have a piece of wool and then they have some fine, fine, high thread count cotton. And so what you do is you're going to soak this in something and put a couple drops of alcohol like Everclear on these and load them up. And then if you put this, this is an old Vix bottle. Do not covet my Vix bottle. Um, you charge up this pad. You flatten it out on your hand. Again, we're not, we're not going to uh, be touching any of this stuff with our oily fingers and then sometimes you'll see that the lac finish that we're going to use wants to stick to itself right away so you'll actually see people putting on uh, like olive oil or some other kind of oil to make the process go along. Well, they end up burning the oil off and all kinds of stuff so I try to avoid using the oil if possible but a Vicks bottle with a lid on it these applicator pads, if I remember, I will tell you, I've got a source that I can get these from fairly cheap. Anyway, you're going to need one of these and you are going to need some lac finish. And there's a kind that I use. 
you need to investigate this uh, by by going with people who are credible at doing this, which I'm automatically excluded off that list after you think about it just a little bit. But there's PADLAC, P-A-D-L-A-C. So look that up. I'm going to give you a hint. If I didn't have any hair here or here, and there was a time when I looked like that, I would have a, anyway, I've told you all that I can. So let's get to the bench. I'm going to show you how to prep the surface, and then I'm going to show you how to put layer after layer after layer on to get this very cool French polish finish. Now, you're asking yourself, why are you doing this now? Well, I have a lot of stuff to do to the guitar before I put the back on it. Remember all this? I want the finish to soak in and saddle in. You know that a couple uh, times along the path in the playlist already, I've taken something and wiped this over so it would prep it. And you can tell this is shiny already, but we're going to do some more on it. Either that or I've betrayed you and already have it done, and it's going to be exactly the same. But you are not in control of that. I am. <laughs> Let's go to the bench. All right. We've got some marking stuff to take off here. I want to remember that this finish was clear because somebody had stripped it off. And we've got a little bit of bleed off of glue right there. So I have this handy little chisel. The hide glue comes right off with a chisel. Nothing there. Good. And what I want to do with this finish is I want to make it very lustrous. And um, there's only one way to do that. And that's with something called a French polish. And you see this on very expensive guitars like this one. Not. I'm over here. I'm hiding this stuff. And because I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can figure it out. But it is a lac LAC finish, which tells you there's some kind of beetle something or other involved and I got to wipe all 80 so I'm going to put a coat of this on I put a coat of this on or two when we were first putting this together now the rag is getting sticky and the trick to using this stuff is wipe all 80 rag lint free paper so you don't have a bunch of environmentally dangerous chemicals floating around but you wipe this on quickly because it starts to stick to itself and when we start doing the circular motion application this product which we'll see in a bit you come in the technique is you're coming in off the side you don't just plop down you come in and then wipe off like this Got a little bit more to do here, but this is just a coat to follow up with a couple of other coats that we put on a few days apart when we first got this finished on. Once it's soaked in and permeated the wood, then we'll start that circular motion thing. You can see how warped this body still is, but there we go. We're going to leave this set. You can put about three coats of French polish on a day, but the trick to this stuff is when you start putting it on too close together or you don't keep moving, the rag or applicator or whatever you're doing starts to stick and you will see that in the finish this is going to be deep and lustrous 
to the point where people will say, why did you waste this much time on a guitar like that? We don't want to forget the sides either. All right, guys, it's secret time. Got the secret rag. We've got the secret Vix bottle, the old cobalt bottle. And within there, we've got the secret, what looks like a toilet paper ghost that you used to make. And within that is this rubbing applicator pad. And it has cotton balls, a piece of wool, and then some really fine, fine woven cotton, kind of like them sheets and pillowcases your fluffy self sleeps on that you won't admit. Anyway, you're going to smack this down. You see there's something coming out of that. Get this nice and flat. Reason we keep it in here is so it doesn't dry out. But within this is some lac solution. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm not going to be responsible for messing up your guitar. But you put about 10 drops on this and you keep it charged. And if you keep it in that bottle, that Vix bottle, it'll be fine. And then we're going to take something that you know what it is, whether you'll admit it or not, it's ever clear. My grandpa Bub knew what it was. I think he made it. We'll put a couple drops of Everclear on there like that. Because what this is going to do is it's going to stop the lac from sticking to itself. This is called French polishing. Now I want you to pay close attention. Keep this nice and flat. Every time you see, you see that? There's... Let's do this hand. You see? See that stuff's drying out as soon as I hit it. Anyway, when you're doing this, it's called French polishing. You're going to come in off the side of the guitar. You don't just plop on. You come in off the side. If you have to stop for some reason, you leave off the side of the guitar. Sweep in, sweep out. No, Mr. Miyagi, make your own movie. Anyway, watch this. We're going to do a series of circles, and we're going to keep the pad moving. You're going to feel it sticking to itself. If you do that, come off of it, pad it, recharge it, okay? Now, again, you're going to feel it. We're going to come in off of this. See this way? We're going to do these circles, and we're going to keep moving. We're not going to stop. You can see the stuff is, well, I can feel it sticking already right there. We're just going to keep moving in circles. Don't keep going back over things much that you've already been through. We're going to let this sit and soak in because what we're doing is we're putting coat after coat of this stuff and we're driving the polish into the wood. That's how they used to do violins. You're asking yourself, why would you do this kind of an expensive finish on Punkin? Well, because Punkin is my guitar, my time is mine, and I can choose to waste both if I like. I don't think when Harmony made Punkin, they realized what Punkin was destined for. Anyway, we are going to see how I came off of there. We are going to leave this sit, and we are going to do up to three coats a day. Now I'm on the side. I'm going to start back here. I still got that phony pin jack. Now this thing is starting to stick to itself, so I'm coming off, keeping it nice and flat, and smacking it on my hand recharges that pad, because this is lac. Lac has something to do with an insect. We won't get into all that. You can tell where you've been because the lack wants to stick to itself. 
and it's supposed to do that. And this is all spirit based stuff, so try to put all of it at once. Don't do anything to it, leave it alone. Once it's dry, you'll come back and do another coat. This needs to go back into the bottle, like so. If you faithfully do that, smack it on your hand, make sure that it's still wet, it will be that way. And you could put a couple drops of the secret sauce on it. And again, the alcohol, Everclear, and you just keep doing this over and over and over. The reason I'm doing this now is because I want to make sure that wherever I'm going to put hardware, whatever, that this is on it, it's solid, and it's uniform. We don't want to have somebody taking the stuff off later and go, yeah, I, I see what they did. They sprayed this with can lacquer. This is French polish. All right, so the takeaway is you can feel when you're using the pad when it's starting to stick to itself. And so if you are just starting in the middle, like putting the pad on, instead of coming in and being in motion, wherever you do that, you're going to have um, spots and swirls. And you'll see some people just going the whole length of the guitar. Uh, I don't like doing that because um, my overlap isn't the same, but you can feel the pad pulling on um, or the lacquer that's being put down or the lac finish. So um, it's something you have to do. I want this to be good and clear and, and, and uh, dried because we're going to put a bolt in the neck that's, that is removable, by the way, and we're going to use a T-nut and some stuff where you could actually take it off later. But remember, I've told you a hundred times, when you take the back off of a guitar and this starts to get floppy and moving around, that's where a lot of neck problems start. And, and of course, if you're working with guitars that have these tone bars and things are collapsing here, yeah, we've talked a lot about there. But when I take this yardstick off, I'm going to have to have this neck bolted. I'm going to have to set the straight edge on it and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. You can tell by the sheen coming off this guitar that this neck or the top of the uh, body, the soundboard is still trash. It's not as trash as it was, but these arch tops are great for you to become very proficient. At, this is really about finishing Edwardian furniture. Joke's on you. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Next time, we are going to put the electronics in this thing. We're going to do a lot just before we seal it up. And then we're not that far from a little, few little final details before it is ready to play. Again, the reason I do this with these terrible, cheap, just utterly, completely and utterly disamazing pieces of garbage is because it builds, builds your skill set. You don't want to be practicing this stuff on a 1918 Gibson L4. Yeah, you're going to see that this year. So, hey, if you haven't subscribed, do that. Remember, I need that extra three cents every month so I don't get foreclosed on the shed here. <laughs> right. Anyway, give me a like if you haven't. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon.